This is TMI on ITV Network. I am Wilson on Marshall. Explain the prospects of any functional refinery in Nigeria. Yes, the of the nation. Get to hear subsidies gone. And that came with a lot of reactions. Both positive and negative. And Nigerians are the ones for the brunt. With me here in the studio to talk about this. I have a very vibrant entrepreneur, a vibrant youth political analyst, join me to welcome Innocent Okotobo. Hope I got that name correct. Very well. Okay, welcome. Good. Appreciate your coming. Thank you very much, so Mr. Mr. Wilson. To him. He is a clergyman, political press commentator. Join me to welcome Bishop Bright Olumese. Welcome to TMI. Thank you. Good All morning, right. viewers. And of course, a petroleum dealer, petroleum marketer, political analyst. Join me to welcome Don Peters. Welcome to TMI. Good morning, viewers. All right. I want to start off from you, Don Peters, because you are in the market. Promises were made that, look, Nigerian subsidy is gone. We're going to work on our refineries. It will start X, Y, Z. All of a sudden, we just can't meet up. Let's extend the time limit. And Nigerians are still waiting. And now we're hearing about an extra extension of two weeks. I've been waiting for almost eight months plus and counting. What do you have to say about this as a dealer in the product? You know, last time we met here, we talked about uh, this uh, refinery. Yes. I said, if. But we know that the government is doing, they are working over there. Mm. And uh, actually, with what the uh, Minister of Petrol has said, the mechanical work there has been done. So they are in fixes, according to the Minister of uh, Petroleum. Mm. But all the same, you know, they have been postponing it, postponing it. Maybe like they said, uh, it was uh, either by January, February. Now they are talking about what April. We are already in March. They said by April, Portacot will start fully. So we are hoping, we are praying that Portacot will kick off. That is what everyone is expecting. Mm -hmm. That is our agitation. So we pray that according to their ways, they should stand by their ways. That is my own. They should stand by their ways. Don't forget, I was a month or two months to use the word if. if. Yes. The if then statement. I, I'll come back to you, Don Peter. Bishop, you've seen the presidency, the minister, of course, Petroleum also postponing the uh, operation time protocol refinery. Don't forget that a barrel of crude oil right now is $87 per barrel. Nigerians ought to be swimming in wealth. But here we are, still grappling with the harsh realities of us are importing fuel, fighting against subsidy, and you get to hear a litre being sold for close to 600, about 700 naira in some climbs. Please take it off from there, Bishop. Do you believe what they're telling us now? I haven't postponed or procrastinated the opening of protocol refinery even to this particular moment. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, viewers at home. Uh, my view over the... Uh, for uh, subsidy removal, the refinery, and uh, what the president has, is saying, they are just political statements. The political statement? Politi total political statement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things you look at, uh, you know, the, there is the problem worldwide with the downstream sector. The downstream sector is a sector that look like providing service. It's not lucrative like the upstream sector. That's why you don't see the lack of shares and big oil company going for refineries. Unlike the upstream sector, you see that uh, you discover a, a site, you drill and you exploit. That is a lot of money. So this issue of it's going to work December, January, is just to, you know, calm the tempers of Nigerians. Mm. There has been no decisive move by the government. No political will. Because the people to fight are many. Number one, the IMF. Most of these are oil block and all of that. They are already mortgaged for loan. All this you don't know is that what they just simply do, they give you money, they loan you money, you, uh, you give them an amount of oil blocks, they move the oil and sell the fuel back to you. And that's the reason why that refineries cannot work. Because there From is the a duration. Hmm. There is a duration by which all of these are arrangements. So the, look at the Dangote refinery, a private refinery. Look at all our modular refineries. 
the least after the pressure is to produce diesel or gas because the, there is a big elephant behind the PMS. Let me give you, for instance, I was in Benin Republic a few weeks ago for a conference. At the fleet station, the fuel is 1,000, 1,200 sefer. In Benin Republic? Benin Republic. Mm -hmm. In black market, is 600 and 690 per liter. And I asked them, what are you telling me? Black market is now, what did they say before? Oh. They said the black market is from Nigeria. And now you could you look at the reason why there's no fuel in Nigeria. The 600 to Nigeria money is 1,200. Mm -hmm. So any oil dealer today who have his way wants to carry this product out of the country. Of the country. I'll come back to you. Well, innocent quotable, you, you, you heard them. From what he said, that if that is a doubt, sort of. I talk about an elephant behind PMS. He mentioned IMF because, uh, according to him, we have to give something to borrow something from them. So, what's your own take on this? Because Nigerians, when they grab them, they are saying, come on, we have refineries, we have another refinery, even private refinery. What is really going on? Why is fear not being sold? less than 600 700 even bringing it back to the price it used to be 50 100 150 per liter thank you very much mr wissing good morning viewers thank you for having me now looking at this whole thing i was talking about refinery being in operation in probably few weeks time okay now which of the refineries are refineries are we talking about there are two refineries in Port Harcourt. The whole refinery, which is about, uh, which produces about, uh, uh, can refine about 60,000 barrels per day. Mm -hmm. Then the one that was built years after can refine about 100, and I think 150,000. 150,000. Initially, it was meant, it was 100,000, they were supposed to, uh, 100,000 capacity. Yes. That was supposed to establish a white caliber, 100,000. But later, the federal government told it wise to say, no, let us depute 150,000. They now established it in Port Tacos. We have in Worry, which is about 125, we can refine 125,000 uh, capacity. Then that's in Kaduna, I think uh, 110,000. Now, sum this whole together, you get 400 and, 400 and something thousand. Our average demand daily, Nigeria as of today, is a over 700,000. Now we're talking about, we have four refineries. We are talking about one being in operation in no distant time. Now if it is, the, let's assume it's 100,000, to what extent can that serve Nigerians? I don't know if you get me. Yeah. To what, you know, we understand the oil po the politics behind the Boeing and uh, government is being, uh, uh, I think uh, servicing that. Servicing the law. Servicing that. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah we, we heard that. We heard that. But the government did not actually come to say, yes, you know, government will never, those are uh, secret information they will never leak out. Now, if that refinery should commence on operation in a few weeks' time, how, how will it get to the court? How many, how many persons will consume that? And do you think that, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I actually don't think that it will affect the price of petroleum as it is today. Do you understand? Except federal government will work out a modality to say, okay, let's MNPC, let us de deliver this to MNPC. Then MNPC will sell it and sell it at a particular price. So if you are patient, then the price given between MNPC and other independent marketers will be a very reasonable amount. But if you are patient enough to say, let me go to the queue of NBC queue and stay. You buy for it. And to, to, to an extent, there will be competition. Those independent market marketers will not be increasing PMS prices at will. While I was trying to come in there today, I bought from one of the best filling stations around along this road. I bought for 618 naira. Hmm. Interesting. Do you understand? So yes. I don't think there is any magic that will be done okay. on that we finally this said will commence uh, operation. All right, now, let me come to you, Don Peter. I said, look, even if we start working, 
if, let's say the word, mm. if it's to start operating, it will not be enough to so advance Nigerians. Now, what do you feel about it? Don't forget that we have a Dangote refinery. We're still waiting for them to start production. We have other refineries. Mm -hmm. Still, we're not feeling the impact. What is really going on? You talked about the upstream and, of course, the downstream sector. Take it up from there. Yeah, well, like uh, Portaco refinery, we know that it, it has the capacity of 210,000 uh, barriers. Yes. And from statistics, we know that that particular refinery will be able to satisfy at least 50% of Nigeria consumption. That is what we are, we are told. 50%? Yes, that is what we, what, what we are told, that Portaco refinery app can satisfy at least 50% of our world consumption. If per adventure, Portaco refinery is functioning to its full capacity, worry is added, Kaduna is added, and other modular refineries, because the problem we are having is this. Government should encourage the modern refinery to also refine fuel. They should be able to give them what crude oil. Well. If they are able to give the crude oil to refine fuel, I do say one thing. The only thing that will make the price actually to conduct that people can feel the impact is this. It's just for example, like Banga, for example. I know that 120 bunch of Banga, palm can, uh, uh, Banga fruits, yes. palm can and fruits, palm can yes. and fruit, 120 bunch will give me a full pickup load. And that pickup load is about 18, 20, 20 liters. Mm. 18 to 20 gallons, gallons. of the 20 liter each mm. that we are going to get from that pickup load. If, for example, I want to meet that palm oil, you specialize in oil, you want to meet the oil. I mean, that know the impact. I know that, okay, I will meet the oil, I'll keep it as a side. I will go for the canner canne, canne so, inside. Yeah. After cracking the canner, I'll bring the canner oil, I will also what? Mill it, it and refine the candle. Yeah. After refining the candle, you can sell it for people that produce the uh, pomade, pomade yeah. or other people who mix it up. Mm -hmm. And that candle, do you know that the cost of that candle oil is more expensive than the palm oil you are going to sell? Yes. If you are selling that palm oil at the rate of uh, 20,000 for 20 liters of oil, you can sell one bottle or four liter of palm candle oil for that 20,000 naira. Then that same palm can, uh, can oil, somebody that knows how to refine it. After milling the oil, you go for the can you mill it, then the shaft that comes out from the after milling the can oil, mm -hmm. then you said you use the shaft for animals' feed. Mm -hmm. You make money from there also. Then you also go back again. The can the shells. The shells. Some people just throw it off, yes. use it for to yeah. figure. No, that shares, when I was in Delta State, they will burn that shares and grind it to powder. To suit they bag it and export it to china which they said they use it for what purification of pure water and gunpowder mm. that kind of share they'll burn it to charcoal then grind it to powder then export it out that means there's nothing wasted from that what kind of oil even after milling the oil then the shaft that come out from the oil you can burn it to ashes mm. and use it for what caustic soda yeah, for production yeah. of what soap the same thing is applicable to this crude oil. If government allow the play field, I, I, I encourage refineries, modern refineries to spring up, people that are expatriate will come up and say, okay, this refinery, I'm not only going to depend on petrol. After getting my, from this crude oil, after getting my petrol, my, maybe my, the, my price, the money I'm looking for is not from the petrol, maybe from those from the waste product that people are looking at the waste product. Because from petrol, we know they said you can get over thousands of product from it. All these syringe, plastics, and other things they derive from it. So oh, especially wow. can come up and say, okay, the waste product that they are talking about, that is where my money lies. It's not the fuel. I may decide to sell fuel at a cheaper rate. If other people are selling their gal uh, maybe a liter of fuel, uh, 500 naira per liter, I would decide to say, okay, I will sell, I want to make more, more I want to get customer, I will do the price, I can say, let me sell it for 200 naira per liter. Mm. Why the waste product we are talking about, I will, ref I will use it and so get my more money. money, more, more money, more money. Okay. Those things that they think is waste, money can come out from there because yes. All right. that is what is that is how it's supposed to play. Because the, the people that are in the fig now, when you now allow expat uh, to, to go to come inside, okay, fine. I, I'll come back to you. Then he raised the vital point. Apart from uh, fuel, apart from uh, diesel, you have other products. Is that where we are lacking it because of this refinery is not functioning? Because we have call fracking machine. Mm -hmm. Various temperatures get to see various products being uh, gotten from crude oil. Now, people are saying the issue is trust. Like, what's the of your point? Can you trust the government? 
This is not the first time they are saying that a refiner will be up and operational, 98% ready. Nigeria are still waiting. Still nothing. Bishop, over to you. Okay. Uh, one of the things we must begin to mm. look into yes. is the problem. You know, when you're looking at problem, first, this is a problem. Now, you also look at the person you have given the responsibility to solve the problem. You also look at the problem of that person. Let me quote uh, former President Obasa just said that he called top management, where he was, to, uh, officially he quoted this, that uh, the president said by December that photographer was going to work. He said it is not going to work. They now asked Baba, ah, why did you say that? He said, why he was in office, he invited top share uh, managers. I said, please, government can run this uh, refineries. You people take charge. Take charge. They said no. Ah. So he tried to convince them they refused. So when they left, he called the MD. He said, please, why are you people refusing this uh, opportunity? He said, no, it's no opportunity. That number one, it's not lucrative. They are in business to make profit. That's why they are doing upstream. That's where the money is. Number two, corruption. Number three, uh, you, you, to get a place to cultivate all of this. So all the big oil company, they just don't have time for all of for those, refining. For those refining. Then coming into the will of the government to provide services. Because just like, OK, the share people said, that downstream is totally for service. You want your producing services. That's what it is. So now, I wanted to come into some, where somebody was saying that the, if the foreign finance are working, it cannot serve Nigeria. That's not quite correct. Remember, the former SNE president, Bukola Saraki, said that the foreign subsidies has come to the extent that there are daily consumption. We cannot consume such. Mm -hmm. That was it. That our foreign have been taken to different uh, parts of, the, of, the, country, of the, the country, outside the country, the country. and that's what we are subsidizing. I remember when the foreign subsidy was removed. There was protest in some some countries, some African countries. countries. Yes. yes, I just gave you my yes. experience in uh, Benin Republic. Benin Republic. Mm -hmm. So put this together, it comes to a political way. First of all, are we allowed to produce foil? That's the question. Because if you go to another data where you call creeks, where you call bunkery, they produce all of these things there. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what is now the reason why government that have the money, that have the power, that have the equipment, cannot. For all these years, 1999 to 2024, we're talking about now refinery still not working. It means there is something, the big elephant we are not ready to talk about. And that is my point. So the, look at this, all this, what is the process of foil? You bring the code door, put it into a blast furnace. The blast furnace, you hit it, the first thing comes out is, is, is gas. gas. Then you hit it again, then it gets to these uh, PMS, diesel, diesel and all, 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 all of that. Nothing is wasted to, 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 be, to, be, to be honest. But the issue is the politics behind it. I just told you right now, we have oil, uh, oil blocks everywhere. This country export oil on a daily basis. Thousands or millions of barrels, yet we are, we are in poverty. Yet we have to borrow to solve, to do critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Then you now ask yourself, what is happening to everyday crude oil they are lifting from in all this way. region? All right. I'll come back to you, Bishop. Kotos, you, you heard him. The same big elephant. Like what he rightly said, nothing is wasted. Right. Even a point that they say, look, these companies are called and they say, we can take this deal. This is purely service. We belong to the upstream sector. So that big elephant, if some person in the creek can refine this product, and our military, that are going to destroy these refineries, though illegal, do you think that we can make it legal and take taxes or collect taxes from this person that are able to do what the government of the day cannot do or will not want to do? Okay, thank you very much. You see, the uh that issue of, I've actually been one of the ad, uh, advocates of encouraging that a government should give our people in the creek license. To license? This, yes, to run okay. this. Because to a very large extent, it will contribute. And it, it will help check the essences of these boys 
that are sabotaging, are sabotaging the oil, uh, uh, our, our sabotaging the uh, pipelines. Mm -hmm. It will reduce vandalism. It will reduce oil theft. As it will give these people in the creek, the host communities, that sense of belonging. You have engaged them. They have businesses doing. Do you understand? You have businesses doing. So as a result of that, it will help check this. And now I can understand why Shell, when about you approach them, as he said, why they refuse. It costs a lot to transport this through whatever the pipeline or through whatever means. Yes. Do you, are you aware that uh, they have stopped transporting crude from Escarvos Terminal, Escarvos, through the pipeline to Warrior Refinery? What they do, they carry, they carry uh, crude now through vessels from Escarvos to Warrior Refinery because the lines are already damaged. Wow. Yeah. The lines are already damaged. They, they go through, it will, they will not, the product will not get there. So they pay four point something dollar per barrel to transport crude from Escarvos via vessels to Warrior Refinery. I also want to say something. Uh, you say that you uh, said that uh, before refineries, if they, are, if they function at optimum, still they will still not be able to serve Nigeria. Why would you say that? Yes. Those four refineries, what is it, what, what 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 capacity do they, pro they, they produce? Four hundred and something thousand. Our demand today is over seven hundred thousand. Now, when was the last time a refinery was built in this country? What was our population then? Those are the questions we should ask ourselves. I remember the last refinery in Nigeria was probably built over 30 years ago. I but, don't forget. But we have a new one now, the Dangote yeah, refinery. That, that, that's Dangote now. Uh, I'm, 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 that, that's Dangote. I'm talking of oh. the four refineries, federal, old government okay. owned refineries. Hmm. Dangote he has not started anything now. So when Bari was leaving, he told us, he told us Dangote will commence operation. Probably the next month until um, date. Too many lies. We have not seen anything. We have not heard anything. Too on many lies. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's look at it. God. We can't. We don't have the capacity. But to, uh, that is not to say. If at least the one with 60,000 uh, barrel capacity per day starts operational, it will not ameliorate our flight to an extent. To a very large extent. Yes. Because if you check those guys that are actually manipulating the process. The most of those guys in the uh, off-stream uh, sector. You, you use the term manipulating. Yes. Let me throw more light on that. Manipulation yes. of the process. Now, okay. When they hear that, I mean, we have suffered too much in this country. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. We have suffered too much. Most of the people would have used diesel in our various businesses. Mm -hmm. Even when you just, you want to go and buy diesel, Probably, perhaps, you do, I think the last time, I stopped using this anyway. I, I stopped. I stopped. The last time, when I bought, when I bought at 1,700, I just told myself that if I continue like this, that means I'll use all my savings mm -hmm. to run my plants. Do you understand? You buy diesel today, when, you were buying, when the dollar was, the dollar price was fluctuating, you buy diesel today, 1,100. When they hear that, when they hear those finishes in January, when they hear that, that dollar price has sold you, they will just go and increase it. Immediately. They will just go and increase it. They will just go and increase it. What? This uh, product. You go, it's your own product. So, okay, what are we going to do? Okay. So they are actually manipulating the process. Oh, over to you, Don Peter. He says someone is manipulating the process. He talked about the white elephant, but I want to talk about the big elephant behind the scene. I also throw more light into these young that have the ingenuity to refine products. They're doing a great job, yeah. according to some persons. We should just license them, collect the taxes from them, take it up from there. These two angles. You know, our government is doing something that is not right. You know, everything they say is illegal. Actually, like, like those people, you find that these are a set of people. They are refining what? Crude oil. Mm. And this is a set of people, you find that they have the knowledge. Though they are doing it illegal, what would what the, the government supposed to do? Supposed to bring these people, call them. Mm. You people are doing this, yes, but because of what you are doing, is not right. You're, you are doing it in an illegal way. Now, I want to encourage you, tell me, give me the cost of you having your own what refinery that you will begin to produce refined product within the state. 
You understand me? The government should empower this set of people so that they will no longer break into the pipeline, mm -hmm. but they will have access to crude oil directly from what the government. When we talk about from what our brother said before, uh, talking about all those shares or people that are having oil well, that mm -hmm. they are not interested in having refineries. Actually, it could be true in the sense that they are exploiting exporting our crude oil out of the country and it's up to now. Government cannot ascertain the mm. amount of crude oil these people extract daily from our land. Are you getting me? If the government me where, all those people that have oil blocks, if I'm the president of the country, I will stop them first and foremost. Mm. I will close all of them down. If it costs us to import for that our people will be using, I will import it, subsidize it, and let our people be using it. Then I will I, I, then I have to start afresh again. That these people that are having the oil well, I want to know how um, the amount of crude oil they extract every day. Every day. I want to know the amount of crude oil this set of people are extracting every day. All those pipelines they used to connect, because those set of people have what it takes to connect the pipe. Maybe they are here in Benin, a big ship inside is, is in Enugu. Mm. They will be transporting the hot crude oil from Benin here to Enugu inside the high sea without the government knowing. So the government should wake up to your letter and shine their eye. If that be the case, so that these things that are not working, somebody should be in the, behind the scene, the cabas. According to Okojo Iwala, when he was talking about all these subsidies there, when they kidnap her mother, all those things. So the government of the day, meanwhile for the country, should wake up and, and begin to check, meet all these companies that are into what is tracking our code oil. Because they are not telling the government the truth. The government cannot ascertain. They, they will only tell you, they be, they, they be pushing and say, okay, these are the bunkers. People, these people break into the pipeline. But they are not talking about the amount of the ship that is lifting our crude oil out of the country without the government even knowing. Mm. I remember last time, if I'm not mistaken, when they were saying the ship was in the high sea, that was, uh, before that ship being in the high sea, before they begin to load that ship yeah. with crude oil, where are the Navy, where are the Air Force, where are the migrations, where are the customs? So these are the things that government need to do. Mm. If it cost him to stay, okay, now we want to stop the crude oil first and foremost. All companies that are that, that, that are into uh, extracting our crude oil, stop. We want to renew, revo we are revoking the license for now. All we right. want to know the amount of crude oil we lift every day. Every day. All right. Uh, I'll come back to you, Don Peter. Now, people are saying that too many lies. Both are poor, uh, the, the owners of these wells, both the government, even the security agents that are given the power to protect our pipelines. We have too many lies emanating from all sectors. I just don't know who to trust. Is that the reason behind all this, Bishop? Okay, uh, first of all, you, you call it lies. Mm. There is something we need to look into what we call agreements. Agreements? Yes. They're not lies, but agreements. Yes, so, uh, just listen. First of all, you know, the May 29th, the president came and said, some say they is gone. gone. We want to say the president will come and say, Nigeria is, has not been allowed to produce PMS. That's mm. the area Nigerians are not looking. Now look at, a, in the process of in, in, in producing or in the, uh, processing crude oil, the first thing you get is, is gas. The second one is foil. The third one is Carole diesel. 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 Then the then, rest of so that. now, first of all, one thing that comes to your mind is that modular refiners are allowed to produce diesel. What now happened to the foil well, okay. in between? You have not asked the question Nigeria should be asking. I don't know if Nigeria has entered into a, a, an agreement with powers that be. Mm. Do you get that right? Because it seems that when the, any president go, gets in there, he sees something in the document and he seems like his hands are tied. Mm. That is the big question that we should find out. Yeah, you can produce diesel, but yes. not fear. So, How come? Because it's the same diesel. process, the same yes. parking mm. mechanism. So so what is going on? Now that's why they are making you to fight your people, calling it. Don't cry, legal, illegal refinery. What is legal refinery? Can mm. you define legal refinery? Mm. And all of that, you are coming to extort uh, uh, people's community, taking their product away. They having access to it, you said it's illegal. The grading that very And all of that. So the, the issue is first, we needed to look at, that's why I told you about political will. We need a president that's ready to die for this country. Mm. Ready to die for the country. Ready to. Because all this cabal will threaten your government, threaten your life, mm. threaten with impeachment and everything. The kidnapping you are seeing here and there and all of that is to make the government unstable. 
There is something that is going on that I want this guy to look into. You don't look into, we create problems for you. These are what powers, you know, manipulate countries. That's why we need a president that is decisive. That's why we need to tell the people the truth. This is the position of things. This is what we should do. If we die, we let's die, say, fighting for our, our, our patrimony. So you see that the first question is, are we allowed to produce for Nigeria? Because look at Jangote refinery, big and great investment. Still struggling. The, the, no, the, the, there is not the struggling thing that is the problem. It is allowed to produce diesel. So what is the issue with the fuel? So hence, Nigerians must begin to ask government many questions. Because that, the, the, the comment you just made, right, has begun to raise too many questions. You can produce diesel. You can. You, you are not. What about for. the fuel? When Osimba Joe was acting, remember that was when this modular refinery saw the light of the day. Mm. Modular refineries came in. The world body wasn't happy. The, is it the what bother the cabals behind the subsidy? Oh, see, you can't have a cabal with. See, let me tell you. Do you know that you cannot be corrupt without an ex external body? You can't move any kind of amount away from a place without an external force. I'm going to tell you. You find that. So when you say there is, there is an interest, invested interest from the international community, and all that, how did they just vested use? Some places allow themselves to be used. There is no, you can't take away the, uh, the position of corrupt uh, security agencies or whatever. But that is not really the major problem. There is a problem that Nigerians have not spoken up. Why are we not allowed? We have so many modular refineries in the country. Yeah. Why are they not producing for it? Now, let's assume, okay, they cannot meet our need. Let's say they meet 50% of our need. It will create, it will, it will reduce, we're going to buy for with dollar and bring the tension in the, in, 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 that is on Naira down. Mm -hmm. So you could see that there's a lot of politics in this oil industry. Yes. So right. one of the things, my, my advice to government. No, we'll, we'll, we'll okay. get to the advice later because right now, uh, you are in the, I'll, I'll come to you because I get to hear uh, that, uh, I got to hear that there is a place at Olubo, but they're not allowed to refine fuel, oh, yeah. but they refine diesel. And I was thinking about it. Is it? The same fracking machine, yes. how come you're allowed to produce particular product, but not the PMAs? Yes. And moreover, if we're allowed to produce diesel, how come also the price is high? Take it up from there. How come the price is high? You know, they said they long removed subsidy from diesel. Yes. And from this uh, modular refinery thing, I'm just hearing that for the first time, that they produce diesel. They do. And they do. They, they don't do produce, produce diesel. They, 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 do. Produce, they don't they produce do. for it. But what about the fuel? So what's that? What, about, what, what happens to the constituents? That's, That's the question. Because it is a process. Yes. Hmm. So is it that it's being wasted or what? That's the issue. We must see this country. So we are not asking. Right. Right. So so no, no, because because, right because, because really, so it is it's crazy really to know that you're giving a license. The first time I got to hear this, and I'm not really so from this angle. I was like, then I went back again. At least my, my, my first degree was on the science. If I talked about the second degree of uh, theatre arts, mass communication, I know about the process of fracking. You pull the crude, different temperatures, give it different product. Oh, and yes. the diesel is allowed to be produced. What about the fuel? Yeah. You are a marketer. I believe that you must be into the secret. What is going on? For me, I can't relate. Really it. It's the same question I've asked myself. Just like a double uh, modular refinery. Yes. I have asked myself, why is it that they are to produce diesel? What about fuel? They are producing diesel there, but no fuel. Mm -hmm. I said, even if the machines they have is not enough, maybe it cannot be able to refine fuel, or mm -hmm. the environment is not secured enough for fuel. Mm -hmm. Government supposed to empower this modular refinery, give them the finance they need. Mm -hmm. Yes. Give them the finance they need. To ensure that as they have already tried their own, they, okay, ask them what machinery do you need so that people can also what refine what fuel. That is what the government is supposed to do. Mm. But government is not doing this. They're supposed to encourage them and say, please, you people have already tried. Yeah. What do you need? What how much will it cost you to be so that you can be refining fuel? Because because the same crude oil here that you use to get. Hold on, Peter. This guy told me because I wish you don't mention my name. 
We have the capacity to refine fuel, but they say we shouldn't go beyond diesel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is really going on? Where, where is this white elephant position that you just can't shake? They tell you produce diesel, no fuel. How? Okay, listen. Yes. Let me ask you a question. If you go to university, uh, various university hostels, mm. you see that they are private investors. Yes. You are allowed to build this hostel, run it for t 10 years or 30 years, and hand over to the school. To the school. To the school. Now, within this, uh, before the 30 years, you are a new VC, what will you do? Mm. You, that's the issue. We want to know how long this agreement. It, it, it shows that there is an agreement somewhere. Somewhere. So how long is it? Are they renewing it? One could, have, one could say that, okay, maybe it should have elapsed. It's, it's been on ground for all of these years and all of that. How did these refineries got granted? When? What, what happened? And strange the creeks that are producing the fuel that are being attacked and destroyed. Destroyed. So you could, you so could begin to... Happening? See, okay, let me tell you, there are some agreements you see they say, okay, within this period we have this. Any other person is not permitted to have same rights and privilege. Yes. I remember wow. Indomie. When Indomie came up, the, the first, that first Indomie you saw. The noodles, had, yes. The noodles. Had Let's make sure brands. Okay, yes. the noodles, sorry. Mm. But the reason I said that was that I was to make a about that. They had 10 years. There was no other brand that brand was allowed. Indomie, yep. so it was not After the 10 years, other uh, names begin to come up. So we want to know from our Political leaders. <laughs> what are they not telling us? Okay, I was telling someone the other day. Even Don Peter is, is, is even in the dark in this. And yeah, yeah, this, a, this, this, what about this yeah, these informations are in the hand of few persons, not few even persons. the president. Yes. I, I, I think right now we, we need to know. Uh, in a sense, you are like, you know, <laughs> like a float right now because you're thinking about the, the same line. If you are giving us to produce diesel, various temperatures, give various products, what about if you there's no way we can do it, but same could yeah. The same could have not be permitted yeah. to so don't mention but we'll be permitted to. Yeah. Where is this permission coming from? Coming from where is your order coming from? Produce this, but not that. So it's obvious that there's a high level politics, oil politics that is being played. Yeah, in OPEC now, you should know that now. Nah. Yes, you know everything about, you remember, you were, you were not acting that how, what come about, how come about this refiner is got granted? Yes. From the information I even gathered, yeah. these guys were actually doing well. Yes. The refiner is doing yes. well. Yes, yes. Until politicians during the came became, became, became interested. Yes, I Just wanted to go. Oh, so, very large extent, MNPC was operating, uh, as MNPC were, 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 were operating very well. professionally. Oh, yes. Do you understand? Know hmm. They had accounts with various commercial banks. Oh, right. All of a sudden, government came and said, Our time is up. Our time is up. So many questions are begging hmm. for answers. Yes, we are giving potential to produce diesel, and diesel is on the high side. They're producing diesel is on the high side. Fear. We're not permitted to do that. Mm. What in the world is going on? What is the politics Nigeria. behind our refineries not working? Something needs to be done about this. Gentlemen, thank you so, so much. Thank you for our wonderful analysis. Thank we keep pressing, we keep fighting, we keep asking questions because too many lies, too many lies. <laughs>